Why don't more infant formula companies use organic, grass-fed whole milk instead of skim? Why don't more infant formula companies use the latest breast milk science? Why don't more infant formula companies run their own clinical trials? Why don't more infant formula companies use more of the proteins found in breast milk? Why don't more infant formula companies have their own factories instead of outsourcing their manufacturing? We wondered the same thing. So we made Byheart a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com. Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Where are the boys? Outside playing somewhere. I thought it was unusually quiet in the house. What are you doing? Just polishing up my beautiful silver. Be careful, you'll wear it out. Oh, no. The solid silver with beauty that lives forever is international sterling. The solid silver with beauty that lives forever is International Sterling. From Hollywood, International Silver Company, creators of International Sterling, presents The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, starring America's favorite young couple, Ozzy Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. Maybe it's just the proverbial lull before the storm, but as we look in at the Nelsons of 1847 Rogers Road, it seems to be a pleasant, easy-going afternoon. David and Ricky are out playing in the backyard, and Harriet's in the kitchen putting away the luncheon dishes. Have you seen the afternoon paper, Harriet? Yes, dear. It's right there on the chair. The boys are reading it. Say, while you're out here, do you suppose you could fix the breakfast nook table? It's practically standing on three legs. Oh, that's right. I did promise to fix that. It's been broken several weeks, hasn't it? I think it's longer than that. Hmm? How did it get broken? Don't you remember? You stood up on the table when you put the star on top of the Christmas tree. <laughs> well, hand me the hammer out of the door there. Well, I can tighten it up in a minute. Pliers, doctor? No, it's probably just a couple of loose nails. Yeah, I slide under here where I can see it. Hmm. What's the verdict? I don't know. It's kind of hard to see here. It's loose, all right. Uh, hand me the screwdriver, will you? What are you doing, Pop? You're just uh, fixing the table leg. Can we help you, Pop? Hand Daddy the screwdriver, Ricky. If I, now, now, don't crawl under here, boys. There isn't room enough for the three of us. We can hold it up for you. The telephone, Harriet. Yeah, I'll get it, dear. Guys, this is neat. Just like a little house. Quit shoving, Ricky. David, I can't work under here with you guys crowd. Ow! Who's pulling my hair? Nobody, Pop. You got a stuck on the gum. <laughs> Ricky, I can't see through the back of your head. Hey, look, Ricky. Here's the tennis ball we've been looking for. Hey, look out, will you, David? I want to get out of here. Aren't you going to fix it, Pop? I can't right now. I'll have to get some screws at the hardware store. I don't know why you guys had to come pushing in here when I was trying to work. What are you going to do, Pop? I might as well read the paper. Can't fix a table without the screws. Couldn't anyway with you guys well, messing I agree around. I'd you, Barbara, if we could get the other members to see it that way. Throw me the ball, Ricky. Ricky. Boys, your mother's trying to talk on the so telephone. Why opposition. don't you play outside? Well, let's go upstairs. You run up the stairs and bounce the ball down. Excuse me, Barbara. Boys, go upstairs. I can't hear a thing. David's making all the noise. Yeah, that's right. All right, Major. fellas. All right. Come on, outside. Hello, Barbara. Huh? That's one out the door. Where's the sports page? Oh, never mind. Here it is. Here we go, Ricky. Hello, Barbara. Hello, Barbara. She must have hung up. What an uproar. You enjoying your sports page, dear? Oh, yes, very much. What's the football lineup? I'm not sure, but I think Notre Dame is playing tennis with Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Oz. Oh, hello, Bernie. How'd the game come out? 
And what game is that? A football game. You and the boys were playing in your living room. Sounded swell from out here. Oh, the <laughs> boys are just cutting up a little bit. You going on a trip or something? Hey, just overnight. I'm going to take Will up to the cabin. Oh, that's swell. See, come to think of it, Oz, why don't David and Ricky come along with us? We'd love to have them. Gee, that sounds like a great idea, Thorny. I think they'll have a lot of fun. It's a log cabin. It belongs to Catherine's brother. Beautiful spot, right on the bank of Rapid River. Oh, thanks, Thorny. The boys would love to go. How do you know, Oz? You better ask them first. Oh, no. We'd be glad to get... I, I mean, uh, 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 they'd be glad to go. You know, a chance to get them out... Uh, for them to, to uh, get away from the house. We'll take good care of them. They'll be back tomorrow in time for dinner. Oh, there's no hurry. I, I mean, I, I hope there won't be too much trouble for No, me. no. I get right in with them and have a good time. Remember when I took them down to the beach and played leapfrog and softball with them? Yeah, that's right. That reminds me. Did you ever return that bottle of liniment? <laughs> Why, certainly. Return at the opening day of the football season. Get the boys ready, Oz. I'll be by for them in a little while. Okay, Thorny. Gee, thanks a lot. <laughs> Boys, David, Ricky. Anything wrong, dear? No, I've got some great news for the boys. What is it, Pop? Oh, this is a big surprise. You'll never guess what it is, fellas. Is it something to eat? No, no, it's much better than that. Mr. Thornberry and Will have invited you guys to spend the night in a real log cabin up at Rapid River. Oh, it sounds very nice. Aren't you guys paying attention? I said you've been invited to spend... Yeah, I know, Pop, but golly, I'm supposed to play football tomorrow. But you can play football any day. But you don't understand, Pop. I'm quarterback. Besides... I gotta meet Louise in the morning. He's gotta meet Louise, sissy. I am not a sissy. You are, too. I always see you teasing her. That's what I gotta meet her about. We're gonna fight it out. <laughs> oh, now, listen, boys. These things aren't so important that you can pass them up to spend the night at a cabin and have a good time with Will and Mr. Thornberry. You like Mr. Thornberry, don't you? Well, sure, he's swell. But he always wants to play leapfrog and softball with us, and he slows up the game. <laughs> Now, look, boys, I don't like to force you to go, but believe me, you'll have a wonderful time. What do you do in a log cabin, Pop? What do you do in a log cabin? There are all kinds of things you can do in a log cabin. There's probably a, a big fireplace and a, and a huge log blazing, and you probably have popcorn and, and apples. and that sound good? Yeah, that sounds good. It's real fun. And then when you go to bed, you can probably have a pillow fight... Throw the pillows around, jump up and down on the beds, feathers flying all around. Can we do that? Of course. Did you ask Mr. Thornberry? <laughs> well, I didn't ask him so many words, but you know how happy and good-natured Mr. Thornberry is. Well, okay, Pop, we'll go. Okay, Ricky? Sure, we'll go if you want us to, Pop. Well, it's not that I want you to. I, I just don't want you to miss such a good time. I'll tell you something else. You can use my small suitcase if you want to. Can we, Pop? Oh, come on, hey, that we need. Come on, Ricky, let's pack our stuff. All of a sudden. We're going to use Pop's suitcase. Oh, it's very interesting. So they finally decided to go, huh? Yeah, you know how kids are. Oh, that was nice of Thorny to invite them. I hope they behave themselves. Oh, they will. <laughs> It'll be sort of pleasant to have the house just to the two of us for a change, won't it? Only one thing worries me. What'll we do for noise? <laughs> I can crack my knuckles. <laughs> it will be kind of nice at that. An evening with just the two of us. Kind of romantic. Yeah. It'd be a little like when we were first married. Just the two of us. Of course, if it were anybody but Thorny, I'd hesitate about letting the boys go. Oh, sure, but you know Thorny. He's dependable and steady as a rock. They're safe as can be with old Thorny. Where would you like to go tonight? Hey, Mom, where's my boy Scott Comfort? In the box on the top shelf of the closet. Oh, I don't know, dear. Personally, I'd rather stay home. Why don't we do that? I'll cook one of your favorite meals and... And we can have dinner by candlelight. Doesn't that sound nice? As a matter of fact, it does. I'll put on some soft Viennese waltz music. We'll face the marriage license to the wall. <laughs> I'll sit there and leer at you. Can you leer? I don't know. It's been so long. <laughs> This whole build-up is probably just to get me in the mood, so I'll help you with the dishes. Hey, Mom, where's my flash garden gun? Oh, it's, it's under my bed. I thought I heard burglars last night. <laughs> Come on, boys. Here's Mr. Thornberry. Hurry up, fellas. They'll be right out, Thorny. Okay. We're all ready. Hey, it's my turn to 
carry the suitcase. You carry it down the stairs. You have your pajamas and your toothbrushes? Sure, we got everything. Let's go. Thanks, well, goodbye, fellas. Have a good time. Bye, Pop. Hey, give your mother a big hug. Goodbye, Davy. Now, be careful. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Ricky. Bye. Well, don't I get a kiss? I'm carrying the suitcase, Mom. Let's just shake hands. <laughs> well, goodbye. Bye, Mom. Take it easy now, Thorny. Don't worry, Mom. Hurry up, Ricky. <laughs> Look at the size of those guys. Boy, it's going to be awful lonesome around here. Well, don't be silly, dear. They'll only be gone overnight. Bye, boys. All right, wave to them. Goodbye. Well, let's go inside, dear. I think it's going to rain. There's a big drop of water on your cheek. <laughs> I think this is kind of wonderful. Just Ozzy and Harriet alone again for an evening. No worries of parenthood to bother them. No everyday troubles to upset them. Alone together. Blissfully happy. As happy as, well, as happy as they were that evening when they had their first dinner at home at a table set with Harriet's new international sterling. You think I'm fooling? Oh, not a bit. I'll bet there aren't many moments that can match it for happiness, that time when a girl sees her own gleaming international sterling on the table. And that's only natural, because the beautiful solid silver made by international is the kind of silver she's dreamed of all her life. The loveliest solid silver in the world, handsome and exciting in every detail. International sterling patterns are designed by top silver artists, and in their lovely line and ornament are mirrored the things you love no matter what your taste, your scheme of decoration. It's no wonder that when it comes to a choice of sterling patterns, so many women prefer international patterns. Visit your international sterling dealer tomorrow and see them. Every one is solid silver with beauty that lives forever, created by famous international sterling. <laughs> Yes, David and Ricky have gone visiting for the night. And over the Nelson household hangs a strange and unaccustomed atmosphere of peace and quiet. Why, it's so quiet, in fact, I can't tell where Ozzie and Harriet are. There's no one in the living room. Hey, wait a minute. What's that I smell? Oh, what a heavenly and delectable odor. Harriet must be in the kitchen. Uh Uh-oh, there's Ozzie. Mm. He smells it, too. He gets up, he follows his nose, it's raised into the air at a 45-degree angle. Uh, Alert to that tantalizing scent, determined to trace it down to its source. He leaves the hall, nose held high and twitching, through the living room, the dining room, into the kitchen. Hello, dear. In a trance, Ozzie walks right past Harriet, over to the stove. He takes the lid off the kettle and... Mmm, ambrosia. Nectar of the gods, food fit for a king. What is it? Mulligan stew. <laughs> Can't spoil my appetite. It smells delicious. No, no, dear. Mulligan stew. Remember the stew I made for you before we were married? Oh, sure. And after we were married. We had it practically every night the first year. <laughs> well, vegetables and stew meat were cheap. Besides, it was the only thing I knew how to cook. Oh, what difference did that make? I had mulligan stew and you. Well, now get out of the kitchen. Dinner isn't ready yet. I can remember the first time you made it. I was visiting you, and your mother went upstairs and let you have the kitchen. I remember. You cut up the beef. You peeled the potatoes. You sliced the carrots. Oh, they're wonderful memories, aren't they? Oh, mulligan stew. (laughs) I was holding your hand when I took my first taste. And then you let go of it and didn't stop eating for 40 minutes. (laughs) Wait a minute. I have a wonderful idea. Don't go away. Stand right there. I have to stand here and stir the stew. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going out and buy you a beautiful orchid. Oh, darling, you shouldn't. But go ahead. (laughs) 
beautiful standing there. I just want to drink you in. Mm. You're drinking in a little mulligan stew at the same time, aren't you? Yes, they left about an hour ago, Mother. A log cabin. Uh -huh, a place called Rapid River. Oh, I'm not worried about them. Not with Mr. Thornberry. Harriet! Oh, Ozzie's home, Mother. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. To you, my dear. I come bearing an orchid that's not half as beautiful. Harriet. I thought I'd surprise you. You put on your strapless evening gown just to have dinner with me. <laughs> Why not? I bought it for a special occasion. Something the matter? <laughs> I can't seem to find any place to pin the orchid. <laughs> Should I get some scotch tape? Don't be so silly. Give it to me. Huh. Oh, well, I'll think of something. Well, wait a minute. If you're going to wear a formal dress, what about me? I don't have one to fit you. I know what I'll do. Where's my tuxedo? Oh, Ozzy, do you mean you'd break down and put on your tuxedo? Well, of course. If my wife can go to all the trouble... What's the matter? Nothing, really. Well, something seems to be bothering you. How did you get snapped up in the back all by yourself? How do you suppose a girl gets snapped up in the back before she's married? <laughs> Don't think that thought hasn't occurred to me. <laughs> hey, we've got a bottle of champagne out there someplace. Why don't we pop it open and make a big night of it? Well, it sounds good, but... But what? Well, mulligan stew and champagne, do they go together? <laughs> Are you kidding? With the price of meat, that champagne's in pretty fancy company. <laughs> Where's my collar button? Right in the box on top of the dresser. Ozzy? Yeah? How does a fellow find his collar button before he's married? There's nobody around to put it where it belongs, so he never loses it. <laughs> Harriet? Yes, dear? Have you seen my black bow tie? Yes, I did, dear, just the other day. Ricky was using it for a slingshot. <laughs> Ready. Oh, I'm in here, waiting for you. Oh, I didn't hear you come downstairs. How do I look? Oh, Ozzy, you look positively handsome. You ought to wear your tuxedo more often, dear. Button the coat. Uh, it, it's pretty warm this evening. <laughs> Besides, I think somebody moved the buttons. I, I can't seem to close it. Oh, well, get away from the table so I can see all of you. Uh, first... Let me explain something. <laughs> Evidently, the cleaners got the trousers mixed up because the ones that were upstairs just won't go on at all. Oh, really? Isn't that strange? Besides, I'll be sitting down. You won't even see my corduroy pants. <laughs> you know, let me help you with your chair, dear. Thank you. Mm. Oh, Harry, that smells so good. Is there enough for seconds? Well, you eat up that helping first. How is it? Hmm. This is a, a pretty big helping you gave me. It isn't good. Oh, tell me the truth. Did I leave something out? No, no, I don't think so. Everything possible seems to be in it. <laughs> it's been so long since I made it. Oh, well, that's all right. Let's be gay. Where's the champagne? Right there in the ice. Oh, how clever. I never would have thought of this. A red clay champagne bucket. What did you do with the geranium? <laughs> it's out in the kitchen. Do you think you can open that bottle? Oh, sure. This is easy. I never could learn to open one of those. Oh, there's nothing to it. Just take, take these wires off. Ooh, my finger. No, here, I brought the pliers just in case. No, oh, thank you. And you cut this heavy tin foil. Oh, boy, it's sharp. And you get a, a firm grip on the cork. Twist it and start pulling gently. Gently is the trick. Very carefully. Oh, oh, oh. oh look out, dear. It's going all over. Oh, oh. Stick your Here, give me a soup plate. <laughs> Where did the cork go? The last I saw it, it was headed for the living room. <laughs> That's pretty powerful champagne. <laughs> 
Oh, well, there's a little left here. <laughs> and, and for you. And I don't touch it yet. Just a minute. Phonograph. Must have the proper move. Dear. May I propose a toast to Harriet? She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies. And all that's best of dark and bright meet in her aspect and her eyes. I think you're pretty too. <laughs> Here's happiness. Would you mind very much if I switch to milk? No, not at all, dear. It's right in the pitcher. In fact, you can pour me a glass while you're at it. Where are you going? Oh, just getting this sweater. It's kind of chilly. I hope the boys have enough blankets up there. Oh, uh, Harriet, as long as you're up, uh, would you mind... Uh, uh, thanks. Never did like that record. Too many violins. Listen to that rain come down. Hmm. Well, that's nice for the boys. There's nothing like a log cabin in the woods, a nice fire and rain coming down outside. Did Thorny say anything about having a fireplace up there? Well, not to me, no. What are you doing? Just taking this tuxedo coat off. It's strangling me. Hey, this would be fun. Let's call them up and surprise the boys. There's no phone up there. Oh, that's right, no phone. She's raining pretty hard. I wonder if it leaks. What, dear? Uh, the roof on that log cabin. Are you worried about the boys? No, no, I'm not worried about them, but, you know, you never can tell those old log cabins. But... Oh, it's turning into a real storm. Did you close the windows? I don't even know if the cabin has any windows. Probably just holes in the wall. <laughs> now, dear, there's no reason to get upset. The boys are with Thorny. They're all right. Well, you can't count too much on Thorny. After all, he's just a neighbor. I'm not getting upset, but that Thorny is so irresponsible at times. If anything happens, he'll probably go all to pieces. This is a terrible storm, Harriet. It's probably ten times worse up there in the mountains. Those big trees and that rapid river roaring right in front of the cabin. Dear, if you're worried about the boys... Well, who's worried? David and little Ricky up there with that madman Thornberry? <laughs> you like to drive in the rain. Why don't we take a little ride? We could drop in at the cabin. Well, if you're really worried... Well, it's not that I'm worried. It's just that we always go up and say goodnight to the boys, and they may not be able to go to sleep. And what about Ricky's teddy bear? He forgot his teddy bear. What about it? Well, ever since he was a baby, he, he slept with his teddy bear. He can't go to sleep without it. All right, there's only one thing to do. We've got to get in the car and take the teddy bear up there. But it's ten miles, dear. Well, what's ten miles? Put on your coat. We've got to get there before the bridge washes out. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of the teddy bear before. He'll never go to sleep without it. How he loves that teddy bear. Remember when he chewed an ear off it and we found him eating the sawdust? Uh, I also remember you stuffing it full of cornflakes. <laughs> well, I figured if he's going to eat it, he might as well get some nourishment. <laughs> oh, by the way, you can shut off the windshield wiper. It stopped raining. Probably just a lull in the storm. When do we reach this rapid river? I don't know. Thorny said it followed the road. Well, that must be it down there, dear. Doesn't look very rapid. There's not a drop of water in sight. Well, where's the river? Gee, and now the moon is coming out. What's wrong with the climate around here, anyway? <laughs> oh, slow down, dear. Isn't that Thorny's car beside that cottage? Oh, yeah. Say, that must be the cabin. Oh, this is a beautiful little place. Seems very quiet. The whole neighborhood's quiet. And don't forget the teddy bear. Everybody must be sleeping. Ozzy. Hmm? All of a sudden, I feel silly. Me too. Let's go home, shall we? You took the words right out of my mouth. Harriet. Yes? If you don't tell anybody we were here, I won't either. <laughs> the deal. The car is over this way. No, it isn't, dear. I can see in the dark. Look out, the trash can. Oh, oh. Are you all right? Oh, I think I broke.
broke my leg. What a place to leave a trash can. Who's there? No, 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 no
The solid silver with beauty that lives forever is International Sterling. Yes, Harriet, the solid silver with beauty that lives forever is International Sterling. Appearing in support of Ozzie and Harriet were John Brown, Tommy Bernard, and Henry Blair. Original music was composed and conducted by Billy May. This is Vern Smith speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. A toast to our new college grad who fills us with so much joy, almost as much as when we're in our RV. Oh, the world is your oyster, kiddo, and ours, too. Now that we're covered with Progressive, Dad and I can hop in our RV anytime we want. Might even splurge on a retractable awning. Oh, look out. <laughs> Sorry, what was I talking about? Protect your loved one with an RV policy from Progressive. Take as little as four minutes to see what you could save at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates.